Hello, so I wanted to make a series on machine learning and just do some tutorials on data science and stuff like that. And I thought before I get started with all that stuff, why don't I just talk about the dependencies and show you how to get your machine up to that state where you can run this stuff, sort of stuff from command line. And so machine learning in general is quite computational heavy. And so if you run all this computation on your GPU, it really does run much faster. So without further ado, let's just jump into it. So first thing you're gonna need to get this stuff running on your GPU is Visual Studios, you need CUDA, you need CUDA NAN, it's spelled C-U-D-N-N, -N. I don't know how you pronounce that, CUDA NAN, yeah, that. So to get that stuff done, first thing, you just download uh, Visual Studios, not Visual Studios code, just Visual Studios, and you want to install the uh, community version. And so when you download this, it should give you something like Visual Studio Installer, so I've, I've installed it previously, obviously. And when you jump it, when you open it, it should... What I found was it, by default, opened the Visual Studios Enterprise 2020 or Community 2020 version. And you don't want that. So in the inner exit, exit that part, and then go into right to the bottom where it says 2019. Find the Community version. That's obviously the free one. And because I've installed it, it's already here. Now, for you, it'll probably say Install, not Modify. Click that. And then what you want to do is you want to install desktop development with C++. And the default would be uh, this this option all the way to this option. Now, I've installed, I've installed a few more other options because um, I plan on doing a series with this. And so if you follow along with the series, it's helpful to have these other parts installed. But if you just want to know from this video, just install the default with uh, desktop development with C++ and you should be fine. Press install. That's roughly about 20 gig. So do make sure you have you have at least that much spare in your C drive, or whatever your drive holds uh, main computational computer files. And yeah, once you've installed that, everything should be good. Hopefully there's no errors. That's great. So you've got Visual Studios installed in your machine. Part one done. Great. Now, assuming you want to use something like TensorFlow, you want to look at the. Um, so this is on TensorFlow's website. It just looks at um, requirements and what packages is linked with what so you can see here if we if we're planning on using our GPU which we are and we want to use tensorflow 2.8 we need to make sure we've got a CUDA version of 11.2 and a CUDA NIN of 8.1 so first thing let's install CUDA which is this so CUDA this is the CUDA 11.2 version there is 11 right now there's something like 11.6 and tried it, had tons of issues. Just keep to the documentation they've got here. Uh, obviously, I've got a Windows version. I've got that version of architecture, 2010, 2010, uh, Windows 10, and local because we're not doing anything by network. And then install that again, rather large file, and that takes a bit of time to download. Once you've got that running, it should look something like what we've installed. It looks something like this. So running that. Okay, so yeah, it'll check your system compatibility. It'll come to the license agreement. You obviously want to go through that and install it. Obviously, I've installed it and I don't want to install it again. So yeah, we've got CUDA now installed and now we need to install CUDA. Uh, yeah, we want to go to here so you can see download uh, CUDA V811 and that's for our 11.2 CUDA version that we have installed on our machines. And we want to, yeah, just library for Windows 86 version, download it, it's a zip folder. Um, and you should get something that looks like this. Yeah, you want to extract that content out into a separate folder. You then want to go to your uh, folder where this would be, in, where the CUDA stuff is installed. So go here, I'm going to go program files. And I want to go to NVIDIA, uh, GPU Computing Toolkit, CUDA, go 11.2. And then you can see these bin folders here. You just want to, once this stuff's extracted, you want to copy this, just paste it into here. If it says, do you want to overwrite the existing files? Say, yeah, I want to do that. And it will just paste it over into this version. Now, your machine should have the files necessary to compute on GPU. 
Now, what else you have to do, you have to go into your uh, environment variables. So if I edit my system variables and go in environment variables and I click on my personal path, so these are more like system, so the bottom one's system variables, top one's personal, personal defined variables. So if I click this and I go into my program files here, you can see I've specified a path to my bin folder, which is here, so just copy and paste that. And the other one's a lib nvvp, which is this one. Just copy and paste that into the lower one. Save that. Obviously, I've done it, so I don't need to do that. Once that stuff done, press OK, move on, and you should be good. So when you go into something like PyCharm, okay, so you've got everything installed to run your programs of TensorFlow and PyTorch off your GPU. And a good way to check whether you have or whether TensorFlow can actually find your GPU is to just jump into your um, Python environment, assuming you have TensorFlow installed, and run some commands like um, tensorflow.python.client import device underscore lib and, and run this command, which will give you a list of your components or just run import tensorflow as tf and then do tf dot uh, device zero and that should give a component usually device zero is specif specifies your gpu but device one can also be cpu but there's different caveats to that but most of them should work so yeah i hope that works for you uh, if you have any errors and stuff like that just let me know in the comments hopefully people commenting on comments can solve each other's issues and stack overflow should help out too so yeah i'll catch you next time where i'll actually talk about how to write a, a machine learning algo i'll catch you next time bye bye